Hi, everyone. I don't know if you know the uh, person Noam Elkies. I know him as a mathematician. In fact, he's famous for being the youngest person ever to win the prestigious William Lowell Putnam competition. Um, it's a competition for college undergraduates, but he won it at the age of 16. Um, he also got a PhD in math uh, very young at the age of 20, and he became the youngest ever professor at uh, Harvard. But he was also a great chess player. He became a master chess player at a very young age, but he gave it up in order to pursue mathematics. Um, however, he did remain um, interested in chess over the years, and he became a grandmaster at chess problem solving, and he even became a world champion at chess problem solving. Um, he also composed chess problems, and we're going to take a look at one that he composed at age 12. So let's have a look at the position. The directions are white to move and draw. If you look closely, it looks hopeless. Black is moving down the board here and his pawns are dangerously close to queening. This E pawn is only two steps away and both of the squares in front of it are covered by black. White can't really stop that pawn. This king is trapped in the corner. It has one escape square here. Maybe white can try something like rook to G1. Black can always block that with knight to G2. Turns out the only drawing move in the position is rook takes f3. Okay. This allows black to push the pawn forward and defend his knight at the same time. So that's kind of a doubtful move. You might discard that uh, at first glance. It doesn't seem to make much progress. But white presses on and takes the knight anyway. Now, white is actually threatening a checkmate. For example, if black mistakenly queens his pawn here, then white has a mate in two. Check and mate. So black has to protect against that checkmate. Well, he just, just takes the rook. And he takes the rook with check and threatens to queen his pawn. So now it really looks hopeless. But white has one drawing move in the position. There's only one place he can move his king to and draw, and that move is king to e6. Okay? And we'll talk about why that's the only move in just a moment. And this looks crazy because it allows black to just queen his pawn here with check. But now white plays king to f7, and white is threatening his own checkmate. And that's pretty funny with hardly any material on the board. But he's threatening bishop to g7 here, mate. And black has to stop that. And if you look closely, you'll see black doesn't have any safe checks. There's a wide open board. The white king is exposed, but black has no checks. So how does black stop the checkmate? Well, he has to defend this square. Can't do it with a move like this because white plays that anyway and forces black to capture. And he mates with a pawn, just a pawn left. And he checkmates. Beautiful. Okay. Turns out the only way to um, stave off a mate here is bishop takes pawn. Well, after bishop takes pawn, white plays bishop to g7 check anyway, forcing black to capture the bishop, and all of a sudden the white king is stalemated. So that's the draw. That's the main line of this problem. Let's go back and have a closer look. Okay, here, I mentioned after the bishop checked the king, there was only one drawing move. Why was it king to e6? Why not king to e7? That can also head for that same square it ended up on. Well, the problem with that is it allows the black king to come out and threaten to promote the pawn, and white will never be able to, be able to manufacture that uh, checkmating idea, and black is simply won. Well, what happens after white played the supposedly correct move, king to e6, and black comes out with his king? Can he do that again here? Well, this time, no, because white now has bishop to b4 covering the queening square, which is why that king had to step to e6 
rather than e7, because if it goes to e7, it blocks his own bishop. Okay, so white had to allow that bishop to cover the queening square in case that king comes over. All right, let's see what happens if the king does come over and white does cover that queening square. Well, black still has a try here. Why doesn't black uh, just cover the queening square himself? Well, white's not worried about that. He just ignores it, lets black promote, snaps off the queen, gives up his bishop, and white even gives up his own pawn here and just heads for this h1 square. Now, this position is a well-known draw. It's a textbook draw. Black has this rook pawn. The queening square for the rook pawn on h1 is a light-colored square, but black's bishop is a dark-colored bishop. It's a classic case of the wrong-colored bishop. That's what they call this end game. Okay, there's no way for black to eject the white king out of the corner. Let's have a look. Suppose black comes forward with his king and pawn. White's just going to move back and forth here, staying in the corner when he can. And now black has to be careful not to stalemate. For example, if he pushed his pawn forward one more time, that's an immediate stalemate. If he plays bishop to f2, that's an immediate stalemate. So maybe black does something like this and allows the king to come out, and maybe calls check. Well, the white king goes back in the corner and now black has to back off, otherwise it's a stalemate. If he backs off with his king, white just goes up. If uh, black makes the move, he goes back. Um, if black comes up again, it's a stalemate. Okay, so there's no way to avoid the stalemate and eject white out of the corner. So that's a well-known draw. All right, so that thoroughly explains this problem. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thanks for watching.